Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. I'm Todd Muirhead. Uh, today, I have with me Lon, and we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff. But Lon, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. My name is Lan Vu, and I'm a performance engineer at Broadcom. Uh, and uh, my private focus uh, right now is how to optimize um, MLAI workload for our customer in, in data center. Well, Lon, the videos you've done for this series the last few years have been great. I really can't wait to hear what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. As we already know, ML AI, especially Gen AI, is a very hot topic in uh, technology right now. We really want to discuss how uh, our software solution for managing data center support this type of workload and allow our customer to run Gen AI workload at scale. With the new trend in uh, AI ML, uh, like with Gen AI last language model, as we already observed in the last two years, it really took the world by storm with many cool applications. But at the same time, this workload is really demanding as well because it consume a huge resources like in compute, including CPU, GPU for accelerations. The need of this type of resource for Gen AI workloads is growing really fast. One of the reasons for this, because for the last word language model, as the diagram I show here, it has the huge number of parameters uh, running from few billions, like GPT-2, 1.5 billion parameters, to trillion parameters, like the GPT-4 model that we have here. In order to train this model, it's required a large computing resource. Uh, for this model here, it's running from 16 to 25,000 GPU. And for its training circle, it can cost from 50,000 to $100 million for just training this model. Yeah, I mean, the the the, the rate of, of improvement with these large language models has been impressive, but it also yeah. has come at a cost in terms of resources, like you just pointed out. It takes tremendous resources to train these really large language models. The benefit come with cost, and for those, then we need a solution to optimize the cost for our customer. With VMware by Broadcom, we provide our customer solution called uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. That includes software-defined service for compute, storage, networking, container, and cloud management. And uh, it's built upon our well-known components like vSphere, vSense, uh, NSX, Tanzu, and Aria Suit. In VCF, when customers want to run AI workload, we have the support to enable on most hardware vendors, for example, Broadcom, Dell, HP, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, uh, to name a few. VMware also provides our customer a solution that we call VMware Private AI Foundation, which is we partnership with NVIDIA to uh, provide integrated solution that include most important components to deploy Gen AI workload. For example, we, we provide a deep learning machines that include NVIDIA components ready for large language model, like NVIDIA NIM RAC, NVIDIA GPU operator. Along with this, other components like vector database and GPU monitoring. One of the very important components to enable last language model workloads is GPU. Yeah, because as I already mentioned, that like we require a huge number of GPU for uh, training this workload and for inference and, and tuning is also require GPU computing resource in multiple use case as well. In VCF, Gen AI workload that customer can deploy the workload using VGBU uh, or make VGBU or even Pathful, which is a three different option that customer can choose from. VGBU solution here, different from Pathful because it allows multiple VM with VGBU can sharing the same setup GPU result. And in some case, reducing the GPU requirement, especially in the case of when workload is more lightweight and smaller model. And another benefit of VGBU is allow more flexible deployment and easier management of AI infrastructure. Here for the MLPUB in front Gen AI workload, we can see it perform as good as bare metal or even better in some other workload. For the case of fine tuning last language model, uh, in this case, we have the Llama 3.1. We also achieve very, very close to bare model performance on a, another system with uh, for GPU. And that, that showcase the benefit. Customer can have more flexible data center management without suffering from performance is yeah this is great uh showing that you can still get all the performance that you out of your gpus when you have them in our uh, virtual environment 
Uh, so customers aren't going to lose any any performance for their ML workloads, but you gain all the flexibility like you talked about of, yes. of managing in the data center. So here I go into detail on some of techniques that customer can optimize Gen AI workload or last language model workload. We can saving the cost of inference uh, and increase the performance of this workload by using VGU for sharing multiple VM, same of GPU resources. And in the case of if your workload is smaller model and the left number of requests in, in our test case is Lama 2 with 7 billion parameter, then we see that we can run two or three VM concurring sharing the same GPU uh, in this server. In this test, you can see that when scaling from one to three VM per GPU using the 20 gig MIG VGPU profile, then we can increase the throughput. Yeah, so this is really great because it shows that um, if you're using VMs, you can leverage your GPUs to get more out of them by sharing them across uh, multiple VMs and, and getting more performance. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, for other workload that more heavy, which require more concurrent requests using larger model, then normally it requires more GPU to run. In this case, we cannot share multiple VM per GPU, but we can uh, optimize the workload by changing the back side of the inference task. Here I show how LM inference perform when we scale uh, from 1 to 16 uh, back side. You can see that have very good scale when we increase the back side for this inference task. If your workload have very big model that doesn't fit into GPU, then uh, in those cases, we need to do the inference on multiple GPU. With increasing the back side, it increased the latency to a certain level, but then it flat out in latency of inference requests. So this is the age-old problem or question with uh, throughput versus latency. Yes. So here, your 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 latency does go up some as you increase, yeah. but then it levels off, which is great. So you're still getting increased throughput, but the latency is staying the same yeah. across the uh, the four, eight, and sixteen uh, batch sizes. Which is yeah. which is great, great performance to see. Regarding to the fine tuning task, there are a couple of techniques that customer can leverage to optimize their last language workload as well. Normally, for fine tuning, it requires more computing resource than inference, and it takes longer to run this task. For those, if customer want to make the fine tuning task run faster, a solution is to scale with more GPU. My test here we ran on ESX A.0.3. A, A100 GPUs. For the Lama 3.1 uh, 8 billion model, which is a smaller model, the, we see that when we scale uh, from 1 to 8 GPU, then uh, the fine tuning time reduce up to 88%. Uh, for larger model like Lama 3.1 70 b billion model, this model, because it is huge size, it requires more than one GPU to run this. In our platform, it can run this model with four GPU. When we scale from four to eight, uh, we see that fine tuning time reduce uh, by half, which is so very good scale when we increase number of GPU. So, Lon, with the fine tuning, maybe you can explain this better than me, but I, I believe that it's uh, customers don't want to use, don't don't want to, or can't afford to do their own large language models like Llama uh, or ChatGPT because it takes those tremendous resources, like you talked about at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. So they take one of those and then they use this fine tuning to add in their own uh, data or tunings. So that, that's what, that's why I fine tuning. So it's, it's, it's not training, but it's kind of like training light in some ways. Yeah. It, it normally, it requires uh, less uh, time for do the training than compared to the original training. Yeah. But it, it still requires more resource than compared to the inference. And another technique that uh, we also see many people interested to do it to save the computing resource and also to improve the performance is uh, using quantile model. Basically, quantile model is a, a technique to compress the original model from higher precision to slower precision. And for those, it's reduce the memory uses, reduce the compute requirement, and have to save the resource and increase the performance as well. Here's I illustrate use uh, 
uh, quantile model in fine-tuning tasks. In here, I showcase how different in terms of when we do original model and do the quantile model. Here with Lama 8 billion on S100 GPU, we can see about 36% differences. And it's one of the techniques to increase performance of fine-tuning tasks. The same impact we can see for the inference tasks as well. And that is to summarize some of technique. There are more than that, but I just show some of the use case that customer can leverage to optimize their workload in their data center. Gen AI model work very well in VMware platform. Smaller workload using smaller LLM model. Then we can really use MIG VGBU to sharing same physical GPU resort and increase the throughput. There are multiple different techniques, as I already discussed, that customer can try to send the cost of AI infrastructure further uh, when they deploy this type of workload in VCF environment. So this has been a great uh, talk. Uh, really interesting to learn about the different strategies you can use to optimize uh, your vGPUs for your ML environments, depending on what you're doing, what your, what, what your specific uh, use case is. So very great information. And you had great data to back it all up. So uh, very cool stuff. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody for watching this episode. And I look forward to seeing you on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series soon. Thank you. Thank you.